Hello, what's up everybody? It's John Wydogan with Natural Freedom League, our website naturalfreedomleague.com, here with my co-host Will Keller. What's up, Will? What's up, gentlemen? How you guys doing? Doing good. We also have our guest back once again, Chris Jansen of End Evil, endevil life. How you doing, Chris? Doing great. Thank, thanks for having me. Good to be here. What's up, brother? Yeah. It's a pleasure. It's, it will. So episode nine today, we have decided we're going to talk about the left-right divide, uh, the, the theater that is politics, uh, liberalism versus conservatism. And um, this is specifically something that we've been observing as we've been going out to the state capitol um we've been out there four saturdays in the last month and a half or so and uh out there they've they've been uh doing a lot of rallying uh against the uh, election fraud and uh, in favor of trump and also um, somewhat against the lockdown so we've been seeing a lot of conservative people um, the Proud Boys, some militia type people, and also people who just love the love them some Donald Trump, you know. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, man? They're out. They're all out there, man. And uh, it's it's a it's definitely interesting to observe. Um, it's you know, being a sociologist, it's uh, it's definitely good good people watching. And um, it's, it's nice to be out there and to be the only people who are actually anti-government. And um, we've, uh, if, you, if you go to our uh, U- YouTube page, you can see um, some, some video, some documenting of what we've seen out there. There have been some people on the left, um, especially the one Saturday we went out there, they had just announced the um, election results that morning. So they were having this rally for Trump. And then you had all these Biden people driving by and talking trash. And um, it def- it's definitely interesting to see how much both sides are divided and um, how much both sides w- worship their side. Um, I'm going to start off leaving with this point of an observation I've made, and then I'll um, pass it to Chris for uh, any thoughts he has to start us off. But the one thing that um, I find kind of interesting is, even though it seems like it's it's um, person worship or or um, politician worship, it also seems a bit of it is they just hate the other side so much. It's almost less they love Joe Biden or they love Donald Trump and more they hate the other side and they see the other side as like this imminent threat. So um, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Uh, From my perspective, I see a lot of of the word that comes into my head is bandwagon. You know, um, it's really easy to jump in with the crowd if everybody's doing something right. And when they're all marching down the street with their um, Trump, flags it's like um some people get really excited and they're like really into it but i wonder how they would be if it wasn't if all those other people weren't there with them you know like even for me it's a lot easier to stand out there with you guys but i'd have a lot harder time just being there by myself like the way you were doing it john out there in um your spot so i mean it's a tendency of humans to want to be part of a group and to want to belong to something. And so I think it's an easy path for people to take to, I mean, at least those people are out there. I give them that. A lot of people aren't even getting involved at all, but um, it's a lot harder to have your own opinion on things than to just side with what everybody else is doing. And so what I really struggle with there is how do you break people out of that kind of sheepish, follow the crowd and ask them to think for themselves and separate from that group think that was what was going through my head last time yeah what about you will yeah um 
every time I've been out there, it feels like it's two sports teams, you know, the way that people are acting. It's, it's very similar. Uh, the psychology it's, uh, it's tribal, right? It's, uh, my side versus your side and, and just seeing people go at each other. Um, it's, um, it's hypnosis. It's they're in a trance. Um, and even if I, I even heard a couple people saying, well, they don't necessarily like Donald Trump, but they're it, it's better than the alternative. So it's, you know, it's this dialectic. It's just giving these people two choices and yet they still choose one of the choices. So there is a, a disconnect. Uh, people feel like they have to choose a side and they they go with it they just go with the flow so and and you know i contribute that to not having a sense of philosophy um you know thinking deeply and truly being open-minded meaning um in the middle being skeptical and and trusting so you're you, you're taking in information you're not subscribing right away there is you know there is a thing of being too open-minded where you're just gullible and you just you just sign on right off the bat and um so it's been interesting yeah to be out there and observing for sure yeah you know it it one thing that we've um, we've probably said this before on this podcast, um, but one thing we've all talked about amongst each other is that it does seem that the conservative mindset is easier for us to reach with the message that we have. Um, obviously, we're going out there with signs that say uh, government is the root of our problems, and you know we've used that sign quite a bit, and. Um, you'll get the conservative people looking at it and saying, yep, th that's true. You know, that, that, that's true. And, and, and to them, they think that Trump represents smaller government, less government, but we know that that's not true. Um, I mean, Trump just got through militarizing the pharmaceutical industry. So how much small government is that? Right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, we have had a few um, moments with uh, the left, uh, uh, the liberals out there um, who, uh, same thing, they saw my sign, uh, these these uh, couple of kids that were over um, uh, the, I think it was the second week we were there and uh, this kid saw my sign and he's like, that's a good sign, man. Like that's, that's the truth. I think that's really the truth. And like, he took some paperwork from me. And then we had that one kid come up and say, he was an anarchist and he was like talking, talking trash. And I told him, you're not a real anarchist. And he showed me his tattoo on his face, his <laughs> anarchy tattoo. And, and he ended up calming down and talking to us. And then uh, a conservative guy was there and he kind of stepped in for me and was, you know, he was siding with what we were, he wasn't siding with us completely. I mean, he said he was a Trump supporter, but he understood what we were saying. And he kind of took over and started talking to this kid and they ended up actually walking through the rally together, you know? So um, although the left seems far gone, th there is a bit of, uh, we have had some, some positive interactions once you get the opportunity to actually speak to them um, when they're not just trying to antagonize the other side. And then the other point I wanted to make is there was the one guy towards the end, um, la this last weekend, and he actually said, you know, BLM and Antifa and the Proud Boys, we should all be on the same side. We, we, the, we truly, our, our problem is government. So he understood yeah. that. Yeah. He understood that. But again, the, the narrative is that the other side is so bad, the other side's going to you, lead you into communi communism, or the other side's going to lead you into fascism. And that really creates this, this fear and this hate of the other side. Yeah, for sure. The dialectic, you know, and I was doing a little reading about um, Hegelian dialectic before our meeting and thinking about how, um, you know, dialectical thinking should be a good thing, you know, um, using your mind to compare the two different opposing polarities of a situation 
and being able to stand on one side and then the other and go back and forth or have a honest debate with someone. But um, we're so caught up in, it's like, like you were saying, it's very theatrical. It's very much like a football game out there where people are there just to cheer, just to cheer on their side, you know? Um, but the dialectic is something that is engineered and created and manufactured. And, and that's the tricky part to get across. I think people know it deep down, but how do you um, make them aware of it, you know? And so, you know, I thought a little bit about just researching where that all comes from. You know, I was reading about how um, originally it comes from like Plato's thought, you know, the dialectic having these arguments and where does it go when you're presented with one idea and then an opposing idea. And as they argue back and forth, it, it could go nowhere. And then Hegel was this German philosopher who comes along and says, um, well, we can create a synthesis. You know, you have, you have your thesis and then you have your antithesis and you put them together and you have a synthesis. So actually, you know, the Hegelian dialectic isn't really at its root. It's a great philosophy. It was a philosopher who was moving forward with Plato's thoughts. But the problem with it is that that whole um, concept has been used by the ruling elite to guide people purposefully from one thought to another that they've already prepared. And, and so the whole situation is kind of a theatrical setup from what I can see. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, the Hegelian dialectic, that's why it's so powerful. It's been co-opted, co-opted, but, um, you know, I, I will say this, um, being out there. Yeah. We've had great conversations and, and I'll say this, the media always is going to portray something to their narrative. Um, we had great conversations, great interactions. We were seeing, you know, people on both sides getting together. There might've been a little, you know, a little drama here and there sprinkled out, but overall it, it was a, it was a huge success for us being there, uh, not, you know, being on the outside, just standing there for truth, morality and, and natural law and, and trying to communicate to people that they're, there's another option, a moral and correct option other than authority and government. And, uh, and we had great, great communication. I think people's, the disconnect is, um, it's really deep. It's, it's generational. They, they've been conditioned and programmed for so long that something needs, they need to snap out of their, their paradigm, their current paradigm and almost start fresh on learning everything, your foundation, cognitive foundation, principles, everything, and just get into that, that process of learning, learning something new. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something different. Maybe it's not, it's Republican, Democrat. Maybe it's something else. Get into that mind, that mind frame of, of options. And ultimately it comes down to discernment as well. People do not have any any type of discerning actions whatsoever they cannot tell what is true from propaganda lies deception um it's just they just take it in and the that's why i'm wearing this shirt today right it's, this is the the media is the most dangerous uh, weapon uh government controlled media so and um but you know, we see on, on the news and on the mainstream media, they, they portray these events a certain way. And a lot of times that might not be the case. So, yeah, you know, speaking of the Hegelian dialectic, it, I had thought about this a couple of weeks ago that it's actually the trivium inverted, right? So it's thesis is grammar. Antithesis is your logic, right? So you're, you're going to read something, you're going to, you're, you're going to critically think about it. So you're going to question it. You're going to say, well, you're going to pick it apart. Right. And then the synthesis is the rhetoric, right? It's like, it's you taking it in, um, challenging it, you know, um, debating it in your own mind, like argument, you know, making those arguments, like figuring it out and then putting it out. So, you know, this idea of how 
the ruling class controls things and how they 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 never create anything new they just pervert things that are already there so here's this powerful tool the trivium which is teaching you how to discover truth and they've taken it and they've used it against us and they've you know they've gotten us to not use it and then they but they use that same process against us and uh, another example of that um, is the the idea that okay so the terms liberal and conservative right the balance of liberal behavior and conservative behavior actually shows how um, how we should be right so your liberal behavior would represent your free will and the choices you make right and um, your conservative behavior represents natural law because those are the boundaries that hold you in and they also parallel with the non-aggression principle right you're liberal you're open-minded you're allowing people to be who they are as long as they're not harming anybody and you're 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 um you know giving people the freedom to 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 do what they want again within the 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 boundaries of natural law which then sort of represents that conservative principle and also i would say that that then represents the self-defense principle because that's where you put you have your boundaries right you you know you 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 um you um what's the what's a good word you uh you establish your boundaries right with, with your self-defense and with your conservatism so mm. i think it's interesting you know when you think about that because then what they do is they turn liberal and conservative into this extreme and they turn it into an ism they turn it into liberalism right and so now mm. it's 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 out of balance it's out of whack and they turn it into conservatism it's out of whack when in reality those two values are very important to a true anarchic uh, society and that could also be thought of as you know your left and right brain right your your liberal and your conservative thoughts you know your your creative self and then your more logical self that that's how you would go about solving a problem when you're you know um, you have a dilemma you want to think about it logically and then you want to get in touch with how it makes you feel emotionally and the synthesis of those you know and so when we're having these problems out there in the real world in life that would be the solution would be for each of us as individuals to go through that process like you described the trivium process which in our physical body would be the two sides of our body and in our heart you know and but the trouble is that people are caught in a play which is like a default selection you know it's like if you don't choose for yourself they're gonna come up with the play for you you know and it's almost like the parent telling your kid what do you want peas or corn you know but the kid doesn't have the intelligence to say well i don't really want either i'd rather have broccoli you know <laughs> there's always another option there's always another choice a creative solution but we don't have the ability to come up to that creative part because we're so caught in this dialectic of here's your two choice, peas or corn. And so a lot of people are frustrated and you see that they're out there shouting and shaking their fist at the cars going by. What are they mad about? Practical things in their daily life, you know, getting shut down, losing their business, um, not having a way to make money. But the solution isn't more government. I think deep down, they probably know that, but they're hopeless because all they have is the default answer, which is red or blue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, um, the, the conversation we had with that militia member that you were speaking of earlier, John, and, and it was great. I was, I was so blown away when he said, um, BLM, Antifa, proud boys, we all need to get together because government is the problem. And, I was stoked on that. And he had a whole little speech and then, but he ended on, you know, um, we're for the people and we would burn it down. We would break them down and help build something new talking about a new system. And it's like, Oh man, that you got to end. You got to end before that, man. It's not about a new system. Right. And um, you know, I think, I think people, um, I think it kind of, it comes down to self-ownership and, um, 
and people taking the responsibility. I think more people, the majority of people in the world know that um, government is not right. Deep down inside, they know it's fucked up, right? It's like, oh, I mean, even as a kid, it's always been a joke. Poli everyone knows politicians are crooked and lying and all this shit. And, um, but yet, people still obey and submit and, you know, follow orders and all that. So there's a sense of self-loathing, cowardice, and, um, you know, abdication of rights. And, you know, it's, it takes a lot of balls to, to step up and, and disobey and, um, um, and don't don't follow the herd, but I think it it must be done. And ultimately, that that comes with inside someone's. You know, it's the willpower, uh, it's the strength and courage, despite of fear. Right. Yeah, and you know, um, I think that you know you talk a lot, Will, about using the Socratic method, and you know when you ask people uh, questions like well, do you trust the pharmaceutical industry? You know, like, or, you know, who, you know, who they all say no, right? Like, like, it's like, you know, nobody, you know, nobody in their right mind can, who understands history can look at the pharmaceutical industry and think that they're, um, you know, that they, you know, are, um, you know, uh, have good intentions or they aren't just out for profit. Um, but yet there is still a, um, a worship of authority, which seems to really be the root of the problem that people can't snap out of. So when you pose these questions to them, I think the reason why they're so effective is because it creates a conflict within what they're saying, right? Yeah. Like I, I was asking that one guy, um, I just posted the video, I titled it, um, is this what did I title it? Is this, uh, is this all staged or are we paranoid? Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like I, that one guy was, um, talking about some movement to, uh, secede from the, the country of California secede from the, the rest of the country. And he was talking about some type of indigenous, uh, nation, uh, that was led by the indigenous people and, and run by the, Indi and I'm like, and we were trying to say to him, well, why, why, why do you need to replace it with another government, you know, and why are you operating within the government to try to make this change? And, um, and then I, I straight up asked him, like, well, if you don't trust the government, why are you wearing that mask? And he's like, you know, I, I'm, and it's, it's really amazing how people are like, well, it's, I, I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do because other people are scared and it's like they don't recognize that they've been given that idea they actually think it's their own idea yeah it's pretty fascinating yeah yeah they, sure. they haven't gone through that process you know that we're describing of actually arguing in your own mind you know it's a difficult process and it's almost i, I think about it like exercise you have to um challenge yourself and that's not what people have been trained to do. I mean, it, I wasn't until I was like 40 where I really started hearing these different thoughts about what freedom really means. And, you know, I've lived all those years and sure, I was always a bit of a rebel and looking at things different than most people. But, you know, I didn't see clearly like I do now that the real problem is is government is one of the real problems people buying into various religions you know religious ways of thinking dogmatic you know solutions yeah so it, it you know it's a hard it's a hard nut to crack and one thing i thought was funny too i was just remembering while you guys were talking now is so many people had the gadsden flags out there this weekend you know and in one hand they have the gadsden flag and in the other hand they have a trump or a USA flag. And to me, there's like a real difference here. You know, the, the Gatson flag symbolized, um, you know, the self-defense principle basically, and um, don't tread on me, right? But, you know, Trump and the government is, that's all they do, like is gonna tread on you, whether you like it or not, right? 
it doesn't matter if it's Trump or Biden or whoever is in charge. The whole idea is they're in charge and they're going to make decisions for you. Right. You know, and I don't know, that's kind of weird to be carrying to me. It just seems like two different, two totally different messages. Yeah. Contradicting for sure. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had, uh, quite a bit of success with the, the Socratic method. So from Socrates, right, this is a, a method of asking questions to stimulate critical thinking. Um, Larkin Rose uses it um, in the Candles in the Dark seminar that, that he presents. And um, it's a really good method. Um, it's actually, it's easy when I do it because you're kind of detaching a little bit and you're asking the, the other person questions. And, and that's all you have to do is ask the questions because once you, f- you follow the progression, they're gonna start tripping over their own fallacies. And you're trying to get them to realize that their belief system is, is messed up. And that's exactly what it is. It's a belief system. It's based in um, dogmatic faith, blind faith. Right. So just by even starting with simple questions, what is a right? Where do rights come from? Okay. So if what gives these people a a moral superiority than, than the other people, can you, can you give away a right? You know, can you take away a right? Just these simple questions. And it it works really good because it's real easy to get into a heated conversation and people immediately get defensive and close up when you're trying to um, when you're trying to propose uh, information that's contrary to what they believe. And because government is a cult, it is a belief system, right? It's the belief in authority. So they'll defend that immediately and, uh, and, and completely go emotional and have uh, an emotional reaction to it. And, um, so yeah, it's the Socratic method. It's, um, it's a good, it's a good method for sure for critical thinking. I think that, um, when we go out and we try to, you know, get information out to the public, I mean, there's obviously different approaches to doing it. And when you're out there and you're actually meeting people face to face, um, you're, you're really just trying to plant a seed. I mean, and, and we're, what we're describing is that people are so, so indoctrinated that the, the only thing we can really do is plant an idea in their mind. And I think that the Socratic method of using, having that seed be a question um, probably bears more fruit um, you know, you can give someone a sheet with information and that, and that will work too. But if you pose it in the form of a question, I think that that sort of triggers the process of really kind of analyzing what, what their opinion is of that thing or what their um, understanding is of it. Um, but I did want to say that, um, you know, it's, it's not for everybody to get out there and like talk to people and Obviously, like some people are better suited at, you know, making a video series and putting things online. And what we're trying to do when we get out there is try to lead them to these different sources of information um, that they can um, that they can uh, uh, research further on their own. But I, I, I have realized as I've been out there that it's quite an opportunity to have someone standing there in front of you and just asking you, Oh, what are you guys about? And then you kind of just give them this information that again, like you said, Chris, like, I mean, this stuff, it's pretty recent for me too. You know, I mean, I've, I've been on the path, but the evolution to where my understanding is now is, is very recent. And so that's another thing to keep in mind when we're dealing with people who are, clearly still stuck in the dialectic and um, it can be frustrating for us but i think it's good to remember where we were five years ago you know and and who we are and what we are the type of beings we are um, we are very programmable we all grew up on the television and it's a powerful weapon you know i've realized more 
the older I've got, just how powerful a weapon it is where I don't even watch shows anymore because I know myself to where it does get in, in my head and bounces around. And people are very programmable. It's been proved, you know. Um, you know, I think we were going to bring up the Milgram experiments as one good example of no matter how many times those experiments have been run, because I was reading about it today and there were people that have tried that experiment again in different ways. Um, Milgram himself ran the experiment and um, basically, you know, putting people in this situation where you're going to choose whether to push a button and shock someone almost to the point of they're screaming and um, you're supposed to keep pushing it because someone's going to tell you to do it. And all the only thing that um, there's almost nobody who ever had the will to just say, hey, I'm not doing that. Well, what the hell are we doing here? We need to stop this experiment. No one ever do that in these experiments. Only if there was a suggestion when they would put someone else in the room to say like, uh, this isn't a good idea. Then some people would kind of say like, I don't know, you know? And so I think like last time we were out there, I didn't wind up talking to people as much. I just didn't have the opportunity or I wasn't feeling it like I have a lot of times, but I was holding the sign, you know, and just a sign that says, where do our rights come from or something like that? It's a question mark in people. Like you said, they'll walk by and they'll look at us and they'll be like, who are these guys with? <laughs> you know, they're not with the, they're not with them and they're not with them. Who are these guys? So I think just putting that question mark and, and letting people know that there are some people that aren't on the left or the right. There is other options. There is this hope. There is this imagination because I don't think a lot of people see that. So I think that's what our job is. And the people we're trying to talk to right now through this video is to say, be that question mark, you know, be that, be that, that, that third option or fourth option. And, and just keep people realizing that it doesn't have to be one or the other. There's, there's more options. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, you know, speaking of the Milgram experience, we're living through the biggest one right now with the masks. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, just get a, a doctor on TV to, to say, uh, you know, we have to wear a mask. Well, first he says, don't have to wear masks. They're not effective. And now it, they're saying, yes, we have to wear a mask and, and all this crazy shit. Now you have to have eye protection and you know, it, it only comes out at night. So there's a curfew, all kinds of crazy shit. Right. And that's the same, the same, um, rules of engagement that the, the Milgram experience had, you know, people saw a, a person in a white coat telling them to do something and they, they did it you know, didn't even think twice, no discernment, um, no knowledge of self and, and the worst, no knowledge of, of morality, what is right and what's wrong. Uh, so, and, and, and we're seeing that right now. So it's, it's, what's even crazier is that there's, as far as the COVID, the whole mass thing, there's hundreds and hundreds of doctors that can testify that masks are ineffective and they they're they're harming your health and all this but you don't see that on the news right because they they condition social media and everything so you're right chris people need to um uh detach from the the cultural programming so you know people get in a routine and it's just they work they come home they turn on the tv they 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 suck it in and then they just repeat the process so yeah it's funny because i think that even myself i think when i had heard about the milgram experiment in the past prior to really listening to um like mark passio right um i think your natural instinct and in the way we've been in, indoctrinated is to think that the milgram experiment shows that humans are, are innately evil. When in reality, what it shows is how indoctrinated we are into this belief in authority. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Larkin Rose uh, uses this experiment. He talks about it a lot in the greatest superstition, no, the most dangerous superstition, his book. And the one thing he says is that the one positive 
from that experiment is that the more people saw other people disobeying, the more likely they would be to disobey as well. Mm. And uh, I've been thinking about that a lot um, as we go out there and as we go to places without masks, um, that the more of us that do it, the more people see us doing it, the more other people will get the nerve to do it themselves. Because like we said, a lot of people are just going along to get along, right? Yeah. Yeah, right along the lines of what you were just saying, this is something I picked out today. Um, in Obedience to Authority in Experimental View, Milgram describes 19 variations of his experiment, some of which had not been previously reported. And it goes through and describes some of these different experiments. Um, and they did them in slightly different ways. And the one that struck me the most was um, in one, they brought three teachers into the experiment room at once. One was a real participant and the other two were actors hired by the research team. During the experiment, the two non-participant teachers would quit as the level of the shocks began to increase. And Milgram found that these conditions made the real participant far more likely to disobey the experimenter. So only 10% of the participants gave the 450 volt, which was the maximum shock to the learner. Whereas in the other experiments it was a really high percentage. I think it was 70, 80, maybe even 90% people would go all the way to the top shock, even when the recorded voice was screaming. So when you had somebody else in the room, especially in close proximity to you saying, um, this isn't a good idea, then all of a sudden people would start to disobey. So that's our role is to be that, that, um, that questioning voice. And it only takes you know, one and then that affects the per people around us. I mean, the truth is we're just, we're like sponges. We soak in everything around us. We're very programmable, but that doesn't make us evil. You know, it just, right gives us we just have to understand that about humans and about ourselves yeah that's that's true human nature right that we are programmable and um yeah john you brought up a great point and you have to be the voice of reason you have to lead by example your actions have to speak you have to get out there you need to tell people no i'm not wearing a mask government is slavery you have to you know be aggressive at times you have to be calm and focused at times but you need you need the whole toolkit and going out there to these events and talking to people face to face i've learned a lot and um it's something i highly recommend people to do it's completely different than you know typing on a keyboard um, even making a video when you're face to face with another human being and you're engaging in these, these conversations, um, you're increasing your communication skills and, um, and you're building your willpower and, uh, developing that energy for action. And, um, you know, ultimately we're trying to create the ripple effect. So, you know, more people need to speak up, more people need to act, need to get out there. Um, and need to disobey um, under under truth. So, yeah, and you know, I think it's when you realize that we are programmable and that we all ha we all have been indoctrinated. You realize how big of a machine you know we're up against, and they have you know not infinite resources, but they have a lot better resources than the rest of us, but times are changing and with um, the technology um, uh, exponentially, you know, increasing. And now, you know, we all can, you know, you know, broadcast uh, shows and get, you know, do that on our own. Uh, we are up against that, that programming. It's like, we're trying to put out our own narrative. We're trying to put out our own program and reprogram individuals, um, you know, but obviously, you know, that they have to take it in and they have to d digest it themselves. We don't have the same tools as the state where they're, you know, they've got your, your children in school for, you know, eight hours a day for 12 years of their life, if not longer. 
Um, but, you know, I think that what we're doing when we go out there in a way is just like marketing natural law, right? So like um, you were saying, Chris, with that sign, I mean, the sign, that sign that says, where do your rights come from? Like, I'll have more people look at that sign and say, and answer the question, right? Like I had one guy the other day, he said, uh, the constitution. And I was like, actually, it could come from God. And he's like, oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I totally skipped <laughs> over. He's like, I totally skipped over that. I'm like, yeah, you did. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, dude. A lot of the conservatives out there said God. Where yeah, they from? most people God. do. Most yeah, people they... do. Most people do. But yeah, I had one guy who was like, constitution and i'm like ah oh, wait a minute buddy you're skipping over it and that's a big part of the problem right there you know yeah um uh the other thing i wanted to say about that is just that like um it's so extreme that like you know each each side thinks the other side is a terrorist like it's that extreme at this point like uh, i was telling will that i the there's a group that goes out there they're um they say they're a media group. It's called Black Zebra Productions in Sacramento. And uh, you can find them on Instagram, on uh, Facebook. But they're always at these protests, these BLM protests. They, uh, they had footage of the Portland uh, protests. Um, they've, they've got gas masks. They've got gear. They, they, they're, they're very, um, what's the word? Um, they're good at what they do. They're like tactical. Um, yeah, they're like they know what they're doing. I mean, they're 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 geared up. They know what to expect. Um, but they are making this documentary where they're in Sacramento and they're filming, um, you know, the police line, which the police are just trying to divide the two groups, right? But the 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 black zebra people are out there and they're claiming that they're just media, but they're they're with the people who are trying to agitate the the right wingers right and then they're literally you can hear them on camera like calling them terrorists like do you realize you're 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 protecting um you're protecting uh, domestic terrorists even the fbi even your bosses say that these people are domestic terrorists but if you ask the proud boys and the militia they would think that you know the antifa is the terrorist and you know and the other side is the terrorist so it's just uh, it's it's pretty crazy how extreme it is, and um, it it's also interesting that when you get a moment to talk to somebody in that in on either side, you realize that they're not, you know, they're not actually that extreme, you know, like like you were saying, Will, the media definitely paints that picture, you know, and, and what we know about history too you know, those of us have taken some time and looking at the deeper layer of things, what happened in the 60s and when these movements were coming about, um, the CIA or the FBI infiltrated groups, you know, we know there's this big money, you know, being pumped into these things. And you see the way people are dressing like um, these costumes almost, where I really think some of these people are probably hired, you know, or, or, because they have staged an event on television we know the news does this they'll stage a total event with actors and then maybe other people are copying the way they dress and it's almost ridiculous it's things are so blatantly um dishonest like why would you ever have to censor somebody if what you were saying was right you know if 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 you had a really good argument it actually makes sense to let the, the people who are wrong say their point of view so then you can prove how wrong they are because it's stupid, you know? But the only reason you'd have to shut somebody up and close their mouth is if you're just talking louder to them. That's like when you're little kids and you just go, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, you know? Mm. I mean, someone like me, I got censored recently on YouTube. I got censored on Facebook and I have a very small reach you know, and I didn't even say anything that out there, you know, well, I guess I said government is slavery, but <laughs> that wasn't what they hit me on. You know, they hit me because there was a little Nazi symbol on the shoulder of Joseph Goebbels saying, you know, that um, we can trick people by telling them a lie, you know, and I was trying to make that point, which is 
ridiculous. Why would you censor that? You know, so so the lies and the bullshit are pretty blatant in your face right now. And if people just took one second to kind of see through it, it it's pretty obvious. And I think, like you guys have both said, um, people know deep down. I think that there's a lot of bullshit here, but they don't want to go that extra mile and push through, push through, and and try to figure it out and argue in their own head or actually have a debate with their neighbor that's constructive leading toward a synthesis. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, it reminds me of clickbait, right? For a site, you know, they just have a crazy title to get people to click on the video or click on the site. And, and that's what they do. Uh, that's what it seemed like with the, um, the, the production company that came out. It's like they came in, it was only for 15, 20 minutes. They created a scene and then they were out of there. Well, they got all this footage now. They can edit it up and they can blast that and, and try to get it to go viral. And, you know, it's just propaganda. And they do that on both sides. Um, so it, it's crazy. It, and again, it just comes down to... Um, to action you know people are stuck in their bubble and uh they're fearful and unfortunately they they don't know the the higher workings of nature and the the most powerful the the biggest force on this planet is nature and she going against nature it, it's just creating um resistance just like a rubber band and then that's eventually going to snap so you know i think it's going to be unfortunate if people don't start asking the deeper and and bigger questions about reality, what's going on in the world, because each individual person does matter and can make a difference. I think a lot of people get stuck in that mind frame. Well, oh, what can I do? You know, I'm just one person. It doesn't matter. Uh, it does, actually. Because Yeah, and I think that, you know, goes back to... Um just how the 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 ruling class um, manipulates everything and inverts everything because they've you know they before the election just seeing people talk about like because a lot of us were saying don't vote you know and um, you know I was I was big on that just at, every other day posting like don't vote and um, you know people saying that like oh that's the only power you actually have <laughs> like it's like like they've been trained to think that and like uh, I think it was Suzanne who said like um, it, it's hard it's it's almost hard to even be mad at some of these young people who are out there because you realize that they've just been trained to 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 act in this way and to think that this system is it, there's a, a, a way that you work within the system to make it change because it me personally when we go out there I don't consider what we're doing protesting now if a cop comes up to us and tells us we have to leave, I'm gonna say, well, we're protesting, so we have a right to be here, right? But mm -hmm. really what we're doing is demonstrating where it's an education demonstration. And it's almost like a town square where we're just like trying to have the conversation. You know, We're just putting ourselves in a place where these are people who are involved on some level. So I think that that's a good place to be because they're at least like, like you said, Chris, at least they're out there, at least they, they care, you know, even though it's misdirected. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say about it is that, you know, yeah, like I, the, the day when they announced it for Biden, I understood a little bit, like why people would be gloating. Like that to me is like, that is a bit of human nature, like to just be like, oh, my team, we won. And, and they knew the rally was out there. So they kind of wanted to drive by and talk shit or walk by and talk shit but it you know beyond that beyond that first weekend okay your your team won so now why why is the the left even coming out to challenge this conservative rally when the conservative rally is really i mean they shut the street down they're really just on that street you know selling you know you know waving their flags and wearing their hats and kind of hanging out together. It's like, why does this, uh, you know, this left wing, you know, left leaning group want to come out here and antagonize them. And that does get you to start thinking that maybe it is um, staged. And um, if you watch the video, maybe we can put it in the description. Um, you see these guys 
one guy's standing he's holding the girl's back and she's filming and he's just holding her back and he's got a vest on and he's got he's got emt patch on his back and he's he doesn't say anything to anybody he just looks like security standing there and then there's another guy who comes up and he's he looks like a police officer he looks like a stormtrooper he's an all black all padded up and he's got an EMT thing on his back. And it's like, I don't know, man. I think there is a bit of like uh, agent provocateur action going on out there. Oh, yeah. yeah well, we were standing there last time and I was, we were surrounded by the, I think those were the Proud Boy guys, right? Yeah. They were kind of all in front of the side of us. And I was looking at some of the pictures I took with them in them. And some of those guys really looked to me just like straight military guys and all their clothes were new their vests were brand new um and i don't know it's just you have to have some doubts about whether it's really an organic you know um organic movement out there but you know the other thing i thought while you were talking there john was i see because i've had a lot of conversations with people trying to um explain the point of view i'm presenting that anarchism you know, anarchy is the solution. And once you get past trying to explain, that doesn't mean chaos. That doesn't mean throwing bombs at people. That's not what anarchy means. Anarchy means no rulers. To a lot of people, that is so confusing. They can't see the trail. They can't see the path through the woods. You know, and I think that's what it is. It's short-sightedness. You know, people don't see that as being a solution. They're like, so what would we do, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know so you see us standing there and to a lot of people that's just a huge question mark of confusion like how could i join a movement that has no direction you know and what we're going to say of course is it's a it's an internal spiritual battle and people are so stuck in this material world i don't think they really understand that that's how change happens in the world that it starts from the inside that it starts from the non-physical realm and um that's a hard thing to get across because our whole society is geared towards um physical world it just which is the manifestations those are the effects of what we've already done in thinking and planning and um what the change the solution is preparing our mind and changing our thought processes and doing that dialectical thinking for the future and setting it up for the next generation so they have these thoughts and they can run with them so i mean that that's the tricky part to um convey to people and maybe you got some ideas will how how we can do that i guess what we're doing right for sure yeah people bring that up when i when i'm in discussion too they they think they they talk about it like government is there interacting with them you know, all throughout the day. In reality, the, the majority of interactions are, are voluntary. Um, you know, going to the store, just dealing with people, going to work and all that stuff. Yet we're in a current state of duress, right? With, with the whole COVID shit. But um, most interactions are, are voluntary. You, you choose where to go to eat or to go shopping or whatever, you know? It's, um, so people just been conditioned to think that they without government um humans would just go crazy and it would be chaos and and you know people would kill each other when uh that's obviously not the case um you know it's not going on right now right i mean there's police officers and shit like that that are you know taxing you and and stealing your money when they pull you over and shit like that but for the majority of interactions they are voluntary um, people just need to, to stop thinking about that. They, they need this, this control system in place. Um, you know, that they, they're not, you know, they're incapable of providing for themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, uh, a good place to focus is that, you know, either way, w- regardless of what side you think you're on, or you think you, you want to win, what we're really observing is the system collapsing you know and i think that that's why i I think that we are better off at this point if 
Joe Biden does end up being president because I think the right wing minded people are closer to what we're talking about. I, I don't see them being as reactive if Trump loses and Biden, you know, is the president. I see them more, um, I see them their mentality to be more to go uh, within a, a community or within a militia to protect themselves and to, to set themselves or prepare themselves. And I think that that is an opportunity for us to reach those people where I think if they flip it and if they say Trump wins, I think the left is more likely to go out in the streets and try to burn shit down. And, um, and that would set up a situation where um, then Trump would come in and declare martial law. And then unfortunately, all of those right wing people would probably cheer that on. And um, that's actually probably my biggest fear at this point. Although I can't lie, there's a part of me that wants to see them flip it just like for theater, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I do think, yeah, I do think, cause I mean, as much as it is theater, it does have an effect on, on us and it, it is a part of the plot and the plan. And so, um, I do, I do just kind of think that that's how it would play out. I think those conservative minded people are closer to where we're, where we're at, where we're trying to get them. And, um, um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys had any well, thoughts on that. As, as much as I'm a super peaceful person, um, gentle, I've always been very gentle, gent kind, um, not wanting to hurt anyone. Um, I can see the writing on the wall. So I've begun making some preparations and I've gotten interested in, in weapons myself. And I'll say it, one thing I've seen is moving from where I was to here, I've been in a few different um, gun shops and almost every gun is bought up and it's really difficult to get ammunition. Every piece of ammunition is being bought up. It's like a frenzy. So all these people that are conservative living in the hills um, out of the cities are weaponing up big time. There's not a gun to be found. I mean, you still can, but I'm just saying like people are preparing out, out, you know, away from the cities. And that's not a good sign, you know, um, when people buy up every last bullet and every last weapon, that's a scary thing. And I can't see that really going well, especially for people that live in cities, because those aren't the people that are well armed. Yeah. So I'm just saying what I'm seeing. And I'm not saying what's going to happen or what should happen. But it's it just doesn't seem like a good situation to me. Which is sad because the, the solution, like I'm saying, to fix it is an internal um, working on ourselves, um, working on our spirit, working on understanding what's right and what's wrong. But what's actually happening in the physical realm right now is playing out is what happens when that doesn't happen. Yeah. When that doesn't happen, things are going to go south quick. Yeah. It's a it's a polarizing system, right? It, that's what it's made to do is to polarize the people and 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 keep them divided. Um, I think it's strategically planned out, right? Presidents are selected, not elected. They do this for a reason, and I think regardless, doesn't matter if the left or the right, they're trying to achieve a goal. We might not be able to see it, even though I do think it's coming to some kind of um, um, you know aggressive action. Uh, I feel like that the right, um, you know, this is they they're the militia of the people, you know, fighting socialism. So they're ready, you know, to, you know, have another civil war at any time. The left feels like they're fighting fascism. So um, and they're ready to, to burn shit down and, and, and go to war as well. So and racism, right? They're totally and, convinced and that absolutely. everyone's a racist. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If you don't share their ideology, then they're going to attack you physically if need be. So yeah, and they and the, the left is scary, too, because they want to tear it down and then they want some new system that basically throws away all of the, um, you know, all of the 
positive things that you know you know they want to throw away everything that america represents right oh yeah uh, they want to completely redo it they which would which implies like some type of international body i i think oh and definitely you know so it, it's interesting if they do flip it back to trump i think that's a sign that it's not it's not ready yet they don't think the people are ready yet if they put biden in it seems like they're going they're going all out for you know international communism and uh yeah but i i just think i just think there'll be a, a big resistance against that and and i i think uh where with trump it sort of like appeases people and it like keeps keeps the process going just more slowly you know yeah but what's going on is very much worldwide. You know, I keep trying to remind people that, you know, when they start talking about to hear the dialectic right here in the States, this is a worldwide problem, what's happening right now. And this little political play that's going on in our country is a very small aspect of the bigger picture. And the whole freaking world is on lockdown, you know? Oh, yeah. This whole COVID thing was across the board, which proves, you know, what people have been talking about for years agenda, you know, used to be 2020. Now we're, we're on agenda 2030, you know, and if these, these words have been written down in documents, uh, I need to do a better job of kind of printing some of this stuff out because I've been coming across some uh, researchers that do present this stuff. It's been planned. It's been written down. This is what we're going to do. We're going to create a one world government and uh, we're going to own you, you know, and so that's what's going on. That's the bigger picture of what's going on. It doesn't matter which talking head is in charge right now, supposedly, because the, the real boss is the centralized, super wealthy people that we don't even know their names, you know? They're who's gonna win. I do think, I do think America represents somewhat of a, of a, a last bastion of of freedom though i mean in terms of you know we do have weapons, weapons. One, and also we just have they they've instilled those values in us to some level you know obviously they've indoctrinated it out of a lot of people but um i do think those principles are are um part of our value system so um i think that I do. I agree with what you're saying. It is. It is an international thing. It's happening worldwide. But I think the world kind of looks at us and sees what we're doing, and um, you know. And honestly, like a lot of other countries are, have they've protested bigger than, bigger than we have. You know, there's been way bigger protests in Europe, and um, so. And to me, that's a good sign. You know, that um, those people are. You know, it, it shows that there's a lot of people that are against what's going on. Um, yeah. But again, they still may not have the principles to really understand what the solution is. Maybe, Will, you can, uh, we can finish up with that. What, what are the principles that we are trying to instill in people and that are needed in order to, um, to get to where we're trying to get? Yeah, the, um, the, the two principles that we live by are the, it's the sacred feminine, which is the non-aggression, and the, the sacred masculine, which is self-defense. Uh, non-aggression is, uh, you know, do no harm, do not um, uh, initiate harm on another sentient being. And the self-defense principle is there to protect the non-aggression principle, which is if harm is initiated onto you, you have the the God-given right inherent in nature to protect yourself um, at all costs, of course, with discernment. But, um, you know, it's do no harm, take no shit. These are the two principles. And when you unify those two principles, then you're in harmony with yourself and with nature. No. Chris, you have anything to add to that? Treat others as you would want to be treated. The golden rule is basically the essence of what natural law is. Understanding that what we think and what we do matters every moment. So right. it's up to you. And that requires self-ownership, right? And we need to yep. stop ad abdicating that responsibility 
to some imagined authority. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Chris, um, where can people find you at one more time? Um, and evil dot life. I'm also on um, library or odyssey and I'm um, trying to put out something every week these days. So um, Chris Jansen, just look me up. I caught your last interview with uh, Corey. Yeah. Ne Nita. Yeah. Nature is the answer. Yeah. That was a good interview. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, man. And that is the truth. Nature has the answer. It's that simple, yeah. you know? Yep. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. All right, Will, anything else to say before we get out of here? No, man, that, that was a great episode. Chris, thanks for coming on. And uh, Sure thing. Thanks looking for looking me. forward to the future. And I just want to tell people to um, stay focused and make sure you're grounded inside and you, you have your thoughts and, um, and stay free. Yeah, and keep a lookout. I'm pretty excited that there's that event in Philadelphia this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if we'll be back out there this Saturday, but I know for sure next Saturday, the which is like the 12th, we we'll, we'll can get back out there. I, I think there's a rally out there every Saturday until this election is like actually finalized. So it's a good place to be. And really, I think that spot is kind of a good place to be at any time. It's kind of, a, again, kind of like a town square. So yeah. Hopefully we can encourage other people wherever they're at to get out there and, and spread the good word. And always remember to put something good in the air and plant something good in the earth. Got it, baby. Yeah. Thank right you. on, guys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>